guys, Julie here, and I'm with Mr. Poe. We are working on our e-collar heel. So if you notice, the leash is dragging. That way I can show you how we hold our dogs accountable for staying in heel just with the e-collar alone, not with leash guidance. That is what e-collar heel is all about. Of course, if you're in a suburban neighborhood, there's leash laws, of course, hold the leash. But I want everyone to know that our training is on the e-collar. That means if the dog leaves heel position, picks up something on the ground, barks, starts running that way, the e-collar is what I will use, not pulling the dog back with the leash, okay? So I've got Poe in this nice little follow position in heel, which has taken a tremendous amount of work on Josh's end to get this. This guy came pulling, zigzagging, mouth constantly to the ground, spooked of just about everything on the walk. A leaf would blow and he would spook. Lots of work. We've got him in this nice follow, which means he is following that left leg as his reference and not worrying about the environment. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm showing you in a low distraction environment how we use the e-collar to keep him in heel, if I can even get him to mess up. Because at this point, we've stayed so consistent that he put himself in heel when we hit the pavement because that is his association to this court is when I'm walking with a human, it's right here instead of I'm dragging them down, okay? So when we talk about the heel position, so clicked right there, I'm gonna raise my number a little bit. I was at a 10, I'm gonna go to a 15, okay? Um, imagine a circle right here that his head stays in and it should be on the left and slightly behind. Anytime his head leaves that circle, whether it be veering out to the left, lagging behind, going behind my legs, too far forward, or even nose to the ground, that's when the e-collar turns on. Comes back, it turns off. And this is how you get a dog who will now hold himself accountable for staying here because he knows how to avoid the e-collar. Click right there, okay? So I'm clicking for any deviation. So the walk should be nice and pleasant. And you say, oh, well, that doesn't look like very much fun to the dog. Well, the whole point is we're gonna take a nice walk to somewhere where we're gonna stop and let you have fun. But the walk should not be for pulling, dragging, sniffing, zigzagging, marking, eating stuff. That sucks for the person and it gets the dog sick and it gets the dog less walks. So nice walk. You're in the car, you're traveling. Then you get to be released and have fun, which he can now do because he has a recall and he's not gonna play keep away and run away. Okay. Let's do a right hand turn. That one's hard. Good. Okay, so he's doing really well staying in position. Clicked right there. Try to keep this in the frame, but anytime he leaves that spot, I'm just tapping. Um, let me show you when I use some held pressure stuff. So I can sort of set up some mistakes. If I feel like he's slipping a little bit, I can start to walk really fast. I'm going to abruptly slow down. If he zooms past me, it's held pressure till he's back and then I release it. Can't get him to mess up. Good job, buddy. Very impressed. But yeah, that's the whole gist, you know, a lot of things contribute to how nice he's walking right now. It's not just this session. It's a culmination of his lifestyle, day to day, structure, rules, accountability, extremely limited freedoms, consistency in correcting what we don't want. All of a sudden, you're going to say, oh my gosh, all of this work was worth it because they just fall into place. All the bad behaviors go away and you're left with this nice, soft, dog who I could literally walk him miles like this miles I mean and he has done some damage to his owners by dragging them and pulling them and now I'm not even having a leash in my hand because of the e-collar training which he so desperately needed I just don't understand 
actually understand is not the right word. I don't know how people could live with him without it. I mean, he was just, it's no surprise to me that he was returned by the first family. No surprise. Because he was just completely out of control. To the point where he was a danger to himself and others. So they actually ended up in the hospital the first week because he ate something poisonous or had a blockage. Then he gave himself Giardia by eating stuff off the ground. He's dragging his owners down to the point where they're injuring their limbs, right? So training was definitely a must for him. I'm so happy with how he's doing. This is a wonderful walk and you can really see how he's in follow based on the shadow. Sit. What a good boy. Stay. Puts himself into a down. Is this even the pose? A double down? So what you're seeing is the opposite of how he came in. So he came in, doesn't care about the humans other than, oh, you open doors for me, you feed me, you play with me, but I'm never going to listen to you. Doesn't care at all about their opinion. Does the opposite of what they say. To now, in his head, thinking, what would they want? And that's what I'm going to do. And that is a nice companion dog that you want in your family. Okay. Break. Yeah, buddy. <laughs>